Welcome to your first Mastering Your Bernina class. This is 1A, and there will be a 1B class, which is a live session where you're going to do mostly sewing. This very first part of class is has always been a lecture class, and so we thought we would start doing it as a YouTube that you're required to watch before you come to class. So when you do come to the live class, the first thing that you're going to get is you're going to get a copy of the Mastering Workbook. You're going to want to bring a three ring binder with you so that you can put your workbook in it. We're going to ask you to bring your workbook to every single Mastering class. You'll probably also want to bring it to any of the Bernina clubs that you come to. When you come to class, we're going to give you a piece of cardstock and we're going to have you put your name on it and you're going to also put your model numbers of your machine on it. Everybody who works at the store teaches the mastering series. So at any given time, you're going to probably have, at some point, you're going to have all of us instruct one or another class for you. And I would love to say that I have a photographic memory, but that would be my superpower. Um, so we're gonna ask you to put this in the front of your machine, and this one will also know your machine model. In your mastering books, there is going to be a set of coupons. We used to have you fill out these coupons, and then you would give us the coupons when you were done with every class. And we also would put on the coupons any kind of supplies that you needed to bring with you. We don't really collect these coupons anymore, but you can use them to your advantage to kind of keep track of your classes. When you purchased your machine, we gave you a Bernina Club card. And what we do with this card is we, it helps you keep track of your classes. On the back of the card, all of the master's classes are listed along with the Bernina Clubs. And when you're done with the class, your instructor will actually sign off on the card. When you come to class, we actually reward you because you're gonna always get a 20% discount the day you take your class. We're pretty liberal on what you can take it that discount on. Most people will take a discount on merchandise, uh, they might buy some fabric or even some presser feet or some Bernina supplies that we covered in class. So, but when you take your four core, everybody, no matter what machine, whether you buy the least expensive Bernina or the top of the line, everybody takes what we call the four core. When, every, when you take your four core and you take five of the Bernina clubs, there are seven of them, we reward you with a 50% discount on some sort of item in the store. And once again, we're pretty liberal on that too. Many people will save that up for may possibly a walking foot, a chair. Um, I, um, sometimes they'll apply some of it toward a cabinet. Um, but our, our suggestion to you is don't buy a package of needles. So you do not want to lose your Bernina Club card because we do not replace this card. So you wanna make sure that you keep it in a safe place. Aside from taking your master's classes and the Bernina Clubs, there are a few other classes that we do recommend that we feel are really great skill builders. One of those classes is a machine applique class. I always tell people there's something about taking a machine applique class that you'll walk out of the room and you won't know what it is, but you will have a comfort level with your machine that you did not have when you walked in the room. There's something about learning how to do a satin stitch manipulating it, sinking the needle, and turning in the right place. That really does make you feel there's, like I said, there's something a little magical about it. I can't necessarily tell you what it is, but um, knowing how to do a really nice satin stitch um, is very, very important, and it will make your work look very, very professional. Another class that we do recommend is, on occasion, we teach an heirloom sewing class. And this is more of a garment type thing. If you are a kind of a hardcore quilter, you're probably not gonna have much interest in it. But heirloom sewing is a very fine, detailed type of sewing that gives you that kind of small motor skill um, experience with your machine that teaches you how to adjust the machine to very fine levels. So if you're a garment constructor, this is a class you might wanna take. You may not have a lot of interest in heirloom sewing, 
but consider it just a skill building type class. The other class that we do recommend that you take is a free motion quilting class. Free motion work is not something I think is very easy to teach yourself. In fact, we have customers that will take a free motion class multiple times because sometimes it just, sometimes it just needs to kick in. So free motion quilting is also something that does require practice. But sometimes it's just important to take it from multiple different instructors so you can kind of get a different slant on how to do free motion. Because free motion quilting is, um, has a lot to do with coordination. So those are three classes that we do recommend that will build um, your skill level with your machine and just basic sewing knowledge. And don't forget, if you own a embroidery module, there are actually three classes that go along with the embroidery module. There's going to be your introductory class, there's a lecture demo on the stabilizers and the other types of supplies you're going to want to consider for embroidery, and then there's an advanced class number three. Now when you come to class, we're going to provide a lot of your materials for the class. We even provide the presser, extra presser feet that you need along with um, some of the specialty needles. But when you come to class, your first class, we're gonna give you a spool of thread. We're gonna be very, very picky about this because the quality of your thread is going to ensure that you're going to have a quality experience. Plus we have very specific colors we don't want you to use. At some point during your classes, you are going to probably buy, need to buy another spool of thread. We're gonna ask you also to keep this spool of thread, put it in your utility box or your sewing bag, and do not use it for any other projects you might be doing at home, but preserve it for your lessons. You're gonna probably need to buy another spool by the time you get toward the back end because you're gonna end up using up um, virtually all of this spool of thread. There's even a class where we go to our thread drawer, open it up, and welcome you to help yourself to the, the um, different types of threads that are in the drawer. When you come to class, you're gonna make sure that you bring, of course, your sewing machine, the power cord, the foot control, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you bring your entire supply box with you. Make sure all your feet are in the box, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have actually some empty bobbins. We do have bobbins in the store, so you know if you need to buy some more bobbins, we're gonna ask you with that spool of thread that I showed you earlier, we're gonna ask you to use a full thread, a full bobbin of thread. And we're gonna ask you to use the same thread on the top and the bottom of your machine. So bring your entire utility box with you. At some point during the class, we're gonna use all the presser feet that are in the box. Your slide on table. You're gonna make sure that you bring your small spool cap, extra needles. Many of the machines also have a stitch card. So make sure you bring your stitch card with you because sometimes we need to access some of the stitches that are on the card itself. Bring some spare empty bobbins because you might need to load some more bobbins. You're gonna wanna make sure you bring your knee lever. You may not have started to use your knee lever. You may have tried to use it and maybe aren't really sure if you like it or not, but we're gonna train you how to use your knee lever and we're gonna train you to love using your knee lever. A class is a great place for us to remind you and to put your knee lever into action. This is a Bernina item and those of us who've been using a knee lever forever love our knee levers and can't imagine sewing without it. You're going to want to make sure you bring your zigzag stitch plate. If you do not bring your zigzag stitch plate, we really do not have spare 9mm or 5mm zigzag stitch plates. You probably have left your straight stitch plate on your machine. It's really a good idea to make sure that you take your plate and put it inside of your utility box. Because when you come to class and you have a straight stitch plate on, there's really not much you can do because we're gonna be doing a wide variety of the different stitches 
and it just is not the same unless you have the zigzag plate. You're gonna also make sure that you bring a pair of scissors with you. It's like going to a reading class without your glasses. So, because we're gonna need to nip and trim some threads along the way. Some of the things that you do not need to bring to class are, you do not need to bring your walking foot because we really are never going to use it. You do not need to bring your embroidery modules unless you're coming to an embroidery class. You do not need to bring a computer or a PC. You do not need to bring your instruction manuals and you do not need to bring your BSR. You will be using a BSR in one of the other classes and we will let you know when to bring it. Actually, it's class number four. The other thing that you're going to need to do is sign up for your classes. We ask you to sign up for your classes in one of two ways. Either in person while you're finishing taking a class or sign up over the phone. I know that seems very old fashioned, but we are an on your feet business. We do not sit at the computer all day long. And if you send us an email requesting to sign up for a class, often you may have neglected to give us some in important information like your phone number, and we'd like to know your machine model too. When you sign up on the phone, all you need to do is give us your name and your phone number and your machine model. And we usually will get back to you and let you know that we got you signed up for the class. Signing up for a class on the phone or in person is very proactive because we can tell you at that time whether that class is full and then possibly suggest another class. If you sign up on email, it may not be for a few days till we see it and you might actually miss out by signing up through email or a text. We're also gonna ask you that if you need to cancel your class, please call us and let us know at the earliest possible moment. Often we have a waiting list and people eager to get into the class. We're gonna also call you generally on the Monday before class to remind you that you have a class that week. The other things that we would like to remind you to do when you come to class is please turn off your cell phones. One of the last classes I taught Every person in the room, cell phone went off. They stopped what they were doing, picked it up, and proceeded to peruse what was on their phone or even actually answer the phone. As an instructor, we have a lot of information we need to impart on you. And if you're on your phone, you're not paying attention to the class, and that requires us to repeat it to you. So we ask you, when you come to class, Please give us respect and also your fellow students respect and put your phones on mute, put them away for a while and have a phone free couple hours with us learning how to use your sewing machine. While you're in class, even though we have tons of material to cover and as I like to think they're pretty action packed, you are always free to get up and go to the restroom which is located in the back of the store. You are free to drink, bring coffee and any kind of beverages that you would like to drink. We do ask that, though that they be in spill proof cups. We actually even have a snack basket. So at any time, if you feel the urge for munchies or your energy levels getting a little low, please help yourself to the snack basket. Um, we all may join you and grab a snack too. In this segment, we're going to talk about cleaning your machine. I will break down each of the different hook types and show you how you're going to clean those machines and oil them. But first, what I always tell people, I clean a machine with things I find in my bathroom. I use a Q-tip and I use a Kleenex. Mostly the Kleenex is to just get the oil off my fingers um, as I handle the bobbin case and the hook of the machine. The first machine that I'm going to show you the maintenance on is the oscillating hook bobbin case. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the throat plate. And 
every throat plate on the modern contemporary machines is going to remove exactly the same way. In the back right rear corner, there's you will see a target. And this is where you're going to put your thumb, press down, and the plate will pop off. Some of the earlier versions of Bernina machines, the plates popped off in a slightly different fashion. And those would be the plates from the 90s and the 80s. And so you'll probably want to consult your manual for that. I'm gonna place my thumb on the little target. I'm gonna push down, I'm gonna leverage down on it and the plate will pop off. You're gonna to wanna to practice that a few times so that you know how much pressure it's gonna to take to remove the plate. Take the plate and set it aside. We're going to open up the bobbin case door now and we're going to remove the bobbin. Oscillating hook bobbin case and the bobbin, so you know which machine we're referring to, is going to be the machine that takes the bobbins that have the seven little holes in it, just like the one you see on the free arm. It also uses this particular type of bobbin case. This bob particular bobbin case system was a dominant system for Bernina until about the last four or five years, which they then went to the Bernina 9 hook, which I'll show a little bit later. So we're gonna set that aside and we'll set the bobbin aside. We're now gonna release the hook from the machine and there is a little lever on the left-hand side. All you're gonna do, just use your thumb and just push the lever to the left. So you're gonna push the lever in this direction, push it to the left. You're then going to release and pull down the hook race cover. This is the hook race cover. It holds the hook in. If you stick your finger in, you'll be able to pull the hook out. I'm going to set the hook aside. Now you're going to take your brush that came with the machine and you're gonna to try to sweep out any kind of dust or lint. And as you can see, we have lint underneath the throat plate of this machine between the feed dogs. This is where the brush is particularly handy, right in that area. And then you're also going to clean out any kind of dirt or lint that might be in the hook system, the race system itself. And as you can see, this machine could use a little bit of cleaning. This is where I like to use a Q-tip to get in there and get all those nooks and crannies and clean all of the junk that will get on the uh, all these parts. Any Anything in here that has any dust, I'm going to clean that out. Okay, I've done a pretty good job with that. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the hook and the bobbin case. So the hook and the bobbin case will also get a considerable amount of um, dust and lint on it and dirty oil. So this is where I sometimes like to use the Q-tip and the Kleenex to clean off the hook itself. Here's the hook itself, and then use a Q-tip to get in and clean the nooks and crannies, crevices. Every little part of the, the hook. I also like to make sure that I clean the spindle. 
because if you're going to get noise inside the hook from the hook a lot of times it's from this spindle because the bobbin case is going to sit on this it's going to sit still and then the hook's going to rotate around it and it's going to sometimes cause um, a lot of noise to come from right here so we're going to make sure that it, this is where you like to use the kleenex to clean off that spindle also like to clean the bobbin case a lot of times the bobbin case will get full of lint and in order to clean this out you like to take a um, drop of oil place it inside of the bobbin case And there's a little bit of a pool puddle of oil in there. I'm going to take a Q-tip and I'm going to saturate the oil onto the Q-tip. And then I'm going to clean out the bobbin case, stick the Q-tip into the hole, the donut hole, what I call the donut hole. It's not going in there very easily. Clean it out and let's see if this comes out dirty. See there's quite a bit of dirt and lint on that Q-tip. Okay, clean out, a lot of times clean out from underneath the, the latch and give that bobbin case a, a clean. At this point, I usually have, you know, oil and stuff on my fingers and this is where I might use that Kleenex to also get the excess oil off the bobbin case. So the bobbin case is all clean, the hook is all clean, the hook system the hook system is clean, and now we're ready to put everything back together again. This is where some people can have a challenge in getting the hook back into the machine itself. And if you think of it this way, inside of the machine, this is called the driver. It is what pushes the hook. So this is your hook, and this thing here pushes this to make the stitch. So if you think of it this way, this is a half circle and this is a half circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the half circles to make a full circle. Now, one of the mistakes that people make is often they'll stick their finger in the hook like this and try to insert it with their finger in the hook. And when they go to pull their finger out, they pull the hook out too. So you're gonna to wanna to realize that you it's actually a two-handed uh, method. So place the, place the hook, it's a half circle, that's a half circle. Place the hook in the other half circle and you're gonna to have to realize there is a track. There is a track right there that this hook is going to sit on. The hook is not going to screw in, it's not going to click in, it's just going to lay on the track. So once you go to um, put the hook in, you might want to actually use your other hand to hold the hook in while you take your finger out of the hook. The other thing you can try doing is if you take the driver and you turn it so it sits like a, I call it a boat, so it sits like a boat. You can then take your hook and place it on top like it's the sail. Once again, it's easier, I think, if you use two hands. One to hold the hook in and so that you can pull your finger out of the hook and then it's in the machine. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to lift up the hook race door. And when you lift up the door, you're going to want to make sure you press on this left-hand side. This is where the, the little click-in latch is located. So you're going to press on that. Sometimes you'll hear two really small clicks. The last thing that I do is I'm going to come in here with my finger, and I'm just going to jiggle the hook race cover with my finger. And the reason I do this is if I do not have this latched in correctly, if I have it latched in correctly, the door is probably going to swing down and the hook will fall out. So once you have that in your machine, you should be able to then put your hook inside of the machine or put your bobbin case inside of the machine. The next thing you're going to want to do 
is put your throat plate back on the machine. Just simply center it and press it down. And now, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a drop of oil in the machine. I'm going to recommend you take the oil and you're just going to come in and you're going to place the oil on the track. I'm going to put a pretty generous squeeze in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hook back out again so I can, or I'm going to open up the hook race cover so you can see where I put that drop of oil. There is a track, that, that track I told you about, runs, that's what the hook is going to sit on and that's what you need to oil. If you were to just take your oil and even just take the oil and just put it right in your hook system, just go until you hit the black and give it a squeeze, this drop of oil will drop and go where it needs to. But the proper place for the oil is going to be this track right here. I put a little drop more and you can see that oil flowing in there. That's the track. That is the point of contact for the hook system on that track. If you oil anything else, once again, like I said, if you drop the oil back here in the black part, it will dribble down and it will come to this point. You, are, you do not need to slosh it around. Do not take your Q-tip and get in there because all you're gonna do is take the oil out. But let the oil slosh around and go where it needs to go. I would recommend that you probably want to sew on some fabric afterwards to get rid of some of the excess oil that's inside of the machine. So that is how we clean and oil an oscillating hook system on a Bernina sewing machine. The next machine I'm going to show you how to clean is the rotating hook bobbin case. And this bobbin case we find very frequently on the nine millimeter machines. So if your plate has a fairly large um, stitch hole in it, then you very well might have a nine millimeter machine. Machines like the 1630, the 200, the 730, the 640, the 580, they all have nine millimeter machine, nine millimeter stitch uh, performance, and they're gonna be using a rotary hook system. We'll take the bobbin case out of the machine, and the type of bobbin it has, has what I kind of refer to as the bobbins with the square holes. They're not square, but it's a little bit different, obviously different size of bobbin, but it has, it has the multiple holes in it, and those holes are designed to read the, with the bobbin sensor. So once you get done cleaning this machine out, once again, we're gonna clean it out the same way that we cleaned out the other machine. Make sure that you, you know, clean up and around the feed dog system, anywhere in the hook system itself. And I like to say that this particular bobbin case system will actually tell you when it wants oil because it will make kind of a rattling noise. Let's see if I can get this machine to, you might be able to hear that noise right there. And so this machine will actually have a little bit of a rattle noise to it. When you hear that rattle noise, um, open up the bobbin case door, give it a little bit of a swipe and give it, a, give it some oil and it will quiet down right away. They always say that rotating hooks tend to be oil thirsty. The only place we need to oil on this machine is between the black and the silver. The black and the silver. So I like to just piece, put some oil there. You can see that drop, that very, very generous drop of oil there. And really that's all there is to cleaning this particular hook. The other thing too is there is, when I do clean the bobbin case, there is a spring inside of this bobbin case. You can see it right there. And this particular spring is called a 
backlash spring or an anti-spin spring so that when you're sewing really, really fast, this spring actually slows the bobbin down so that the um, bobbin doesn't backspin and get start to unwind. So one of the things you got to be really careful, careful about is that if you pull this spring out by accident, you're going to want to, I'm just using the oil tube as a pointer, you're going to want to make sure that you get that spring inserted into the correct direction and not upside down. And as you can see, that spring has, it's going to be, it's going to, it has an upward kind of a, I don't know if you can quite see it from this direction, but it has a little bit of an upward um, coil to it. If the spring appears flat when you put it back into the bobbin case, you have inserted it upside down. So it's really important that you put this spring back in because it's going to control your bobbin a little bit better. It's not going to, um, it's not going to destroy your sewing day if you don't put it back in, but um, it, it is an important element to have in your machine. Many, many types of bobbin cases have these springs. And so that means when you get in here to clean the bobbin case out, you're gonna to wanna to be exert a little care so that you don't pop that spring out by accident. Kind of just very gently sweep around the spring. And once again, I do like to take and put a little drop of oil in the bobbin case and then use my Q-tip to saturate the oil. Clean the inside, clean the, what I call the donut hole of the bobbin case. Get the junk out of there. And I like to clean all the little spots on the bobbin case. And I also do like to get underneath the, the latch Sometimes gunk and junk will accumulate under the latch of the spring. I'm going to show you the track that you can oil directly if you want to, and it's right here. It's right there. There is a little bit of an exposure of a track on the right-hand side. There's also one over here on the left-hand side, but it is a little bit harder to see because you don't get a big gigantic exposure to it. But if you wanted to, you could rotate the hand wheel until you found that. I'm going to take away the flashlight and I'm going to rotate the hand wheel. You rotate the hand wheel until you see the tip of the hook. There's the tip of the hook. And if you back it off a little bit, you can almost see that track right in the view. Now I can't see it, now I can. But you do not have to oil that track. All you really have to do is oil between the black and the silver, right between the black and the silver right here. It's all you have to oil between the black and the silver. Cleaning and oiling the rotating hook system is very, very simple because we don't have that spare part. We don't, we don't have to take the hook out. We don't need to clean it. So when you're done with cleaning the machine, you're going to simply take your throat plate, center it back on, push it down, and you're done. So I'm going to talk, tell you a little bit about the oil that we do use for the rotating hook systems. If you have more than one machine with Bernina, you might actually have a different hook system. The oil we use is a very, very lightweight oil. And this machine uses a lightweight oil because the hook system itself has a tighter fit. And if we use a thicker oil in this machine, the oil will actually get split as opposed to lightly coating the parts. So think of it as if you were to pour oil in a frying pan and then run your spatula across it, how the oil gets um, split by the spatula, think of it in that way. So we always wanna make sure we use this lighter weight oil in the rotating hook system. The Bernina 9 hook cleans very, very similar to the oscillating hook. Once again, you're going to remove your throat plate and here's one that has the target in the back of it. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll take the bobbin case out. We're gonna pop the little lever and the bobbin case will pop toward us. The bobbin for this machine is called the Jumbo Bobbin. And it is these larger black bobbins and they have the thread sensor, the silver thread sensors that read the rotation of the bobbin and um, also read the holes that are um, in the bobbin to determine the amount of thread that's currently on the bobbin itself. So that's the bobbin that goes inside of the nine hook. To release the hook, there is a lever, just like on the oscillating hook, located on the left-hand side. We're gonna depress that lever to the left, and it is gonna release the hook race cover. All we have to do is reach in, use your finger, grab the hook, and pull it out. There is a magnet holding the hook in, so you may have to pull on it a little bit and we're gonna set that aside. And just like the oscillating hook system and the rotating hook system, you're gonna get into the hook and you're gonna clean every amount of dust and dirt that you can see on the track, on the hook race cover, underneath the feed dogs. So go ahead and get in there and clean that out. Once you do that, we're then going to oil the machine. Now, we're also going to use that opportunity to clean the hook. and I clean this hook exactly the same way that I would if I were cleaning the, um, the oscillating hook system. There is a spring on the inside. I've never had anybody ever pop that spring out, um, but you can get in there and clean any kind of places that have any dust or dirt. Cleaning the bobbin case for the nine hook is the same as with the other machines. On the inside of this machine, it also has a backlash spring or anti-spin anti spring. Um, it is in there pretty firmly. It's pretty difficult to pop that spring out. So um, um, when you clean it, you also, you do want to be careful about uh, popping that out. So very gently get inside of there, clean it out also. The inside of the bobbin case itself does have a release latch. And once again, be um, I don't think the um, uh, with this particular bobbin case, because the machine itself, okay, we do have uh, the spindle with the spring on it. The contact is not quite the same as it is with the oscillating and the rotating hook system. So cleaning out the inside of this bobbin case, we don't get quite the same type of contact. So you're not gonna necessarily get noise from this bobbin case, but every once in a while, if you wanna take and put a, a very gently probe, a Q-tip in there, um, you can, but do it very, very gently. You're not going to, I've never had anybody pop anything out of it. Um, but you know, like they say about a Q-tip, you don't put it anywhere, um, any place bigger than your elbow, I think is the, what they tell you about a Q-tip, but you can get in there and clean any uh, rogue dirt or dust that might be in there. Okay, so we're now ready to oil this machine. And there's actually inside of this machine, there are two felt pads. And you're gonna oil, you're gonna oil those felt pads. There's one, you can see the, right there. And there's one right here. So you're going to, the oil, the felt pads are gonna soak up the oil. So you oil those felt pads. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put oil on the track. This track is very similar to the oscillating hook machine. Right on the track. Put that up and show you a little bit better, right on this metal track right here. Cause that's where the hook is going to sit. 
Then we're going to put the hook back into the machine. Now, there inside of the machine, there are two flanges and there's also a dot. And the dot performs a very important role in helping you line up the flanges because there is a hole actually in the hook. There's actually a hole. This hole is, you can just see right there. I'm, right there's the hole. So if you line up the hole and the hook, then the, the area for the flanges, which there's some cutouts in the back of the hook for the flanges, that's where the flanges are gonna fit in. So this little dot is lined up at about seven o'clock and then I have the dot in this hook lined up at seven o'clock. There it's right, I got it glaring through the hole. And if I take this, and this is a kind of a tight fit, and there it goes, it went right into the machine. So you have to tilt the hook into the machine because it's, um, it's a little bit bigger than if you have are familiar with the oscillating hook system. And the magnet will help to pull that hook right in if you get the hole lined up. That's the point of the hole. And the magnet's going to um, take that and just pull that hook right in there. Let me show you one other way of inserting the hook. So I've told you about the dot, and that dot happens to be sitting at 7 o'clock. If you take the hook and lay the hook down on the driver and lay the hole so it's also lined up um, in line with where the dot is, you can then lift up the door and let the hook fall into the hook system. Now I find, there it went, it went, it went in. I find that it goes in about um, two out of every three times. I want to talk about one other thing with the 7 Series machines. When this machine came out, it originally had an oil reserve right here, take the throat plate off, and an oil reserve had, was marked with a red dot. And in this little oil reserve, it's a felt pad. And when you run the machine, the centrifugal force of the hook rotating pulls the oil out of that felt pad and it helps to keep the oil, the hook oiled. And you have to remember that these machines are steel upon steel. There is very little, any kind of plastic or uh, reinforced kind of um, um, non-metallic materials used. It's steel upon steel, very, very durable, but they do need a little bit of oil in them. So um, one of the things that happened a couple of years ago is some people found that they were getting some uh, discoloration on their thread. And so through doing some investigation, Bernina found that some of these reservoirs were possibly getting clogged and they advised dealers and customers to no longer oil this particular reservoir. Now, to be very honest with you, we only had one customer who experienced this particular problem, and we still recommend that you oil this particular reservoir. If in the, in the event that we need to, we can also replace the felt reservoir. So you can't do it because the entire cutter has to come off and it, and then the, uh, the felt reservoir is right underneath. So we're still very open about um, going ahead and oiling that. If you should uh, start to experience some darkening on your thread that doesn't seem to go away, then you want to start, you'll want to stop oiling that particular area. But um, once again, we had one customer out of all of our customers have an issue with it and we're gonna leave it up to you to decide whether you want to oil it or not. The, mo the current newer machines coming in do not have a reservoir, they don't have the felt reservoir, and the little hole is not painted red. So, so a final couple words about cleaning and oiling your burning the sewing machine. 
It's very important to keep your machine cleaned and oiled. You should consider it a point of pride to do this because you're all you're keeping your machine clean um, and you're keeping the wear level down on it. It only really requires, like I said, um, a Kleenex and a couple of Q-tips. Of course, use your brush to get the big lint out. Um, your oil, make sure that you use the correct weight of oil. The um, oscillating hook machines use can use a slightly heavier oil, where the rotating hook machine and the Bernina 9 hook use the lighter weight oil. And the even the oscillating hook machines can use this lighter weight oil in them. So all three of the hooks can actually um, use this particular oil. One of the last things I would tell you is I generally do not recommend that you use canned air because a lot of that dust is going to end up just being blown right back into your machine. So just use simple methods of, you know, what you have on hand and you'll be able to keep your machine nice and clean. Now that we have gone through how to clean your machine, I'm going to answer some very, very common questions like how frequently should I clean my machine? And that's really a very kind of, it could actually be a difficult question to answer because it really depends upon your sewing style. So you're going to need to figure out what type of sewer you are and what little kind of cue works best for you. So one of the things we tell people is you could clean your machine out by possibly every project. But projects are going to vary from person to person and sewing style to sewing style. If you are a quilter, that's a really, really big project. But if you're a garment constructor, a jacket, a, a, a jacket or a blouse could be a project too. So you need to look at your project and decide, well, you know, how long does it take me to sew it? So sometimes I feel like project is, if you're a garment constructor or a crafter, a project might be a good idea because a quilt would actually constitute possibly more than one project. The top might be considered project number one and quilting it might be project number two. But the reality of it is many people work on quilts for many, many months. So not so sure that I think uh, if you're a quilter that you should rely on the project theory. Another consideration you might want to consider want might want to is possibly how many bobbins do you go through we suggest that you might want to clean your machine every three bobbins some people will even tell you a spool of thread now i'm not talking about one of those big gigantic mega spools of thread i'm talking about what we call project size just so happens that one of these project size spools actually will wind one to two bobbins of thread depending upon which model of machine you have and the size of bobbin that is in your machine. So you might wanna go by the size of spool you're using. If you tend to sew on and off during the course of a week, you might say you might clean it on a Monday or you might clean it on a Friday. That works really great for people who sew on a very, very, very consistent basis. Sometimes they will tell you that you can use hours. They say that your machine should be cleaned every three to four hours of sewing time. But what is that? That's hard to calculate. And there's no clock right there on the machine that actually ticks down the time for you. And that's one thing I would really like Bernina to put on the machine. It's right there as a usage clock. So instead, you might want to think the physical time you spend in your sewing room. Because when you're in your sewing room, you tend to have the same types of habits of you putz around a little bit, you sew, you tinker with this, you press that, you rip this, you sew a little bit more. So you might want to use hour span instead. So you might want to clean it out every 8 to 12 hours you spend in your sewing room. So that tends to work for me because I tend to sew in about three hour blocks. So that means about every four, three, four, or five days, I'm going to clean my machine out. So there you have it. You have some couple suggestions of how frequently you should clean your machine. You might clean it by the amount of bobbins you use, about three, whether you use a full spool of thread. You might clean it out every project. You might clean it out once a week or once a day, or 
every eight to 12 hours of sewing. So pick one of those that works best for you. And um, if that doesn't work, switch to something else. But as a general rule of thumb, what we're saying is you want to clean your machine out as frequently as possible. There's nothing to brag about to say that, you know, you don't ever clean your machine because what you're doing is you're just accumulating dust in your machine. And most of that dust actually comes from your thread. We even have some machines that have little oil cans that pop up on them that will tell you when to oil. But our personal feeling about that oil can is that by the time it pops up on your machine, we feel as though you should have cleaned your machine at least four or five times. Some of your machines are even gonna pop up something that looks like a wrench and a screwdriver. Or there might even be a note that comes up that says, your machine has reached a time when you should take it and have it professionally cleaned. Wanna make sure that you realize don't panic if you're somewhere on a sewing retreat or sewing vacation, you don't have to drop what you're doing and take your machine in to get serviced. It's just a friendly reminder. It's like them tapping you on the back saying, hey, you know what? You've sewn a lot. It's time to have your machine taken in for a spa day. And at some point that's convenient to you, bring your machine in and we will take it through a servicing. The last cleaning suggestion I might have for you is that if you take a little bit of Windex and spray it on a dust-free cloth or a paper towel, then you can use it to wipe down the outside of your machine with all the other dust and dirt that might accumulate on the machine. Also bear in mind that a little bit of WD-40 works great for removing any kind of tape or glue that may also have gotten stuck on your machine. And don't forget, a full set of cleaning instructions is located in your instruction manual, which is always good to take it out, the instruction manual, every once in a while, leaf through it because there's a lot of really great information located in the instruction manual.